Drawing the same plants, shrubs, and trees repeatedly takes so much time, although it's absolutely essential for creating beautiful landscape drawings by hand. However, there is a better way to save time and do it faster while maintaining that hand-drawn quality. I will show you how to create your own stencil library step-by-step step so that you can use over and over again in your drawings. And I'm doing this in the app Procreate, but you can apply this methodology in almost every app. If you find this template valuable but don't want to create one yourself, you can skip straight to my free PNG file containing over 100 stencils. Link in the description below. So the first step is just to create a couple of stencils. I'm going to use my 6B pencil to get started on this A4 size paper. What I'll do is just to make a series of circles. I'm going to use my assist guide feature right here. And I'm just going to make four of this. I'm not too concerned about how they look. They'll just be a sort of an outline for me to draw four different plant stencils. And I'm going to draw this first one, just sort of a generic. So this might be something that you already have as a cat file that you kind of want to just trace over or like me, you can just be looking at a photo or a drawing that you've done. So this, I would say is a pretty common stencil type. And then the second one, let's do give it a little bit more branch. So I would say this is probably another common plant in the plan view. So you can spend a long time just giving it a level of detail that I might not be giving it. And then this third one, maybe I'll just actually do another circle. I'm going to start from the middle again. It's this sort of look. And then for our last one, let's do three major branch. And I'm going to use little circles around the plant to just give it a different look. I think this is a good starting point. I'm going to turn off this background layer or I just delete it completely. And now the four drawings is a basis for us to get some color going. So what I'll do here is just to make this a little bit smaller. So I have a little bit of breathing room around it. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to move this to the layer below and I'm going to color with my watercolor brush, which you can download completely free on my website. We just head to the link below. You'll grab a copy of this watercolor brush. And then I'm going to do my first kind of a bush in a solid green. I'm going to do a yellow one for the second plant right here. And then this third one in a sort of a baby blue color. And this last one, I'll give it a sort of a pink purple -y color. Okay, so now we've got like a base to maybe give it a little bit more depth in the highlight or in the shadow. So the best way to do that, in my opinion, is actually enable the alpha lock. So what this alpha lock does is the next color that you put onto this, it will actually stick to the where the pixel or the color is currently. So if I go ahead and pick a more saturated version of this green right here, if I just go over around the edges of this green, you can see that I'm not going over and beyond in the white space. But you can actually pick a slightly yellow color just to maybe in the middle, give it a little bit more highlight. And I'll do the same thing for the, for the yellow bush right here. I'm gonna just sample a slightly darker version of this yellow that I currently have. And I'll do that for the edge, just very ever so slightly. And you might actually be interested to give the branches a little bit more depth just in the area of the branch, just to give it a little bit more shadow. And then for this blue, I'll do the same thing. I'm gonna give this edge a little bit more depth. Lastly, do the same thing for this purple plant right here. And to give it a sense of depth, and maybe I'll just do along the branches like this. Okay, so we're at a point where I think we can actually use this in the floor plan. You can probably go back in this and just make it prettier. And for the sake of this demonstration, that's not where this focus is, but I will show you like if you want to just add some highlight in some area just to make this a little bit more interesting, you can. But if I'm at a point where I'm ready to bring this into a floor plan, there's just a couple more things I want to do. So I want to maybe up this edge. So I'm going to erase the edges where I've overcolored in the same brush. So I can actually erase with this watercolor brush, which is really cool. What I'll do next is actually just to merge these two layers because I don't like to copy and paste if the line weight and the colors are on their own layers. So what I'll do is I'm just gonna pinch to merge and then I'll duplicate them down just twice. And I'll show you what you can do by duplicating them down. So the first thing you can do is in this middle row, let's say you want to change the entire hue. If you're in a different season, maybe this entire row of plant 
has a different hue or maybe it's more muted because it's like winter or something, you can change the entire hue for that row. Let's say you just want to change the saturation for one of them. So I'm gonna go select it with my rectangular tool and I'm going to enable my saturation. Let's just say just this plant, I'm going to make it red. And just this one, I'm going to make it a different kind of blue or purple. So you can see there's a lot of room in case you didn't get the color right at first, you can really go back and adjust this. And when you're ready to export this, we want you to turn off this white background and then export it as a PNG. And in the next step, I'll show you how to actually use this in a site plan. So step number two is I've got a site plan. I wanna really use the stencils that I just made. So we will actually bring the previously exported file or the, or the photo in here. And it's gonna come in at this PNG file. As you can see, it doesn't have any backgrounds. It's just the PNG file that we can reuse over again. Let's say I'm going to cut out this tree. Let's pretend that's a tree. And then I'm gonna have three finger to swipe down and I'm going to actually just uh, cut and paste. So now this is on a layer of itself. So if I turn off this library layer, I can move the thing that I just copied. I'm going to duplicate it again, and I'm gonna reuse this same shape tree. Maybe I can rotate it a little bit now. I'm gonna use it for this smaller tree right here. And you might be asking like, I can't really see the things behind it. So we can vary the opacity so that if we bring it down, then we will be able to see the, the drawings and the other stencils that we may eventually have below it a little bit better. Let's go ahead and turn back our other, our other stencils. Let's minimize this stencil layer because now this is smaller. We can reuse some of them for these medium sized plants. I'm going to start populating these medium sized circles with this shape right here. And what I'll do is cut and paste again, and then I'm gonna turn off this stencil library. So I'm going to copy and paste this shape just a couple more times. And you can see because this yellow tree is on the layer above it, it's actually going to hide and mask these pink ones below. Once I have enough of this, I can actually just merge them into one layer like this. And then I'll do the same thing for the tree. Let's go ahead and find another shape to populate some other areas. Let's go ahead and find this and I am going to cut and paste. And now I'm gonna move this over. I'm gonna use one of these points to make it smaller and bigger if I need to. You can rotate it, flip it horizontally, vertically to give it a little bit more variation. Okay, now let's take a look at our layer palette. You can see I've made a lot of duplicates over just a very short period of time. So what I'm gonna do right now is do a very quick perch. So you can just pinch a couple of times until all the same objects are on the same layer. So right now, if I can just turn on and off everything with one pinch of a finger right there. And if you wanna just like reduce the, the stamp look in here, I think a quick way I could do this is maybe just on the same layer and I'm gonna use my marker tool again. And uh, in the edges where they look a little bit cologned, what I can do is just uh, go over that with a smaller brush and then just to make that blend a little bit better. So I'm gonna do this a little bit quickly. You can see this is not going to take very long and I'm only doing it on the layer. There's more things that we can do later to blend the look a little bit more. So the next step is maybe to add a little bit of shadow and shade. So let's pretend the sun is coming from this way. What I'll do is I'm gonna create a new layer and I'm going to pick a sort of a navy color or purplish color to, to do this shadow. And I'm gonna use the same marker tool. If the sun is coming this way, then my shadow is really going to be around this way, right? And because this is a bigger tree, I'm gonna have a bigger shadow. And the same reason, this is also a fairly big tree. And for the smaller, shorter bushes, what I'll do is decrease my brush size. And let's just give these like shorter plants a smaller shadow. I'm gonna turn the normal blending mode to multiply. So this color, you can actually see through the line weights and the texture below the brick pattern. And if this color doesn't look quite right, 
you can always just adjust the hue just a little bit. And the final step that maybe I'll show you is a very sort of a, uh, advanced level. So for each of the layers that I have, I can actually tweak that layer a little bit more by giving it even more depth because the stencils that we created, they're more sort of a consistent homogenous look, right? They don't really react to how the sun is coming from this side. This technique we'll be using is the alpha lock. So a quick way to turn on the alpha lock is you can just two finger swipe until you see the checkerboard pattern. So what I'll do here is in the green layer, where I have the green plants, I'm going to go to my hue saturation point and I'm gonna use a pencil. And then I'm gonna decrease my brightness by about 10%. And then I'm gonna just make sure this hue is in the middle. I'm not sure why by default it's, it's set to minus 20, but I really just want to give this existing tree, existing bushes, a little bit more shadow on this side. So you can see I'm, I'm using the marker brush and then I'm just gonna go, go around it just to give it a little bit more depth and you can do this for each of for each of the plants here. I'm gonna do it for these pink flowers, which I do the same thing. I'm gonna do my pick the pencil setting and decrease the brightness. Make sure the hue is set to 50%. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. Just give one side of this a little bit more shade. Okay. And lastly, I'll do it for my tree. Decrease the brightness. And for here, maybe I'll switch to my watercolor brush, brush on this side. Maybe the final step is I'm going to add a little bit of shade in the area where this larger tree will likely to be casting a shadow. I'm just going to make it around this area because likely this area is going to be in the shade and we we'll do the same thing with this area. Now the trick is to switch the normal blending mode to multiply and then you can play around with opacity a little bit just to see where you like it and maybe at the end of the day you might want to do a little bit of cleaning up with a naming and such what i would do is to maybe just group them into a folder so that you can quickly turn off your coloring versus your line weight and maybe when you're finished with the drawing you can always zoom in and go back and just add a little bit of finishing touches let's say around the edges, just to blend things a little bit more. And I will reserve this for really the final step. You might be wondering, can I do this in Mofolo Trace or another app? The short answer is yes, but only to some extent. You can follow the same process in Mofolo Trace until you reach the color adjustment step. Mofolo Trace simply just doesn't have that feature yet. However, you can easily import my templates into Mofolo Trace to populate your drawings. And I'll show you how to do that in this video here.